if this was my life, this would be my cover. A crown, because I compete in pageantry. I was part of both my high school and college cheerleading teams. And I'm the daughter of a successful ER doctor who's considered to make one of the top income brackets in the world. From the outside of my life, it looks spectacular. A life filled with dreams, hopes, and ambitions. And then I turn my page. Before third grade, my life was pure happiness and excitement. I went to a Catholic school, and I was always surrounded by a lot of friends. But that's when my parents filed for divorce, and my friends slowly started to disappear. Their parents didn't like that my parents weren't together anymore, and they wouldn't let them come over. I thought this was a minor upset in elementary school, and I thought things would get better into middle school. This is when I became a victim of bullying. You would think that people are bullied because of their looks or their sexual orientation. Me, however, I was bullied because of a small, tiny piece of cotton, also known as a tampon. A kid in my grade got into my space maker case looking for a pencil, and he found this tampon inside. Pretty soon, I was walking down the halls. I was being whispered about and called names. One that distinctly stands out to me that I remember being called was a slut. I was horrified. I woke up every morning begging my parents not to make me go to school and please to let me transfer. They finally saw how depressed I was and they open enrolled me in a country school. I will never understand the relationship that this boy saw between a tampon and my sexual activity, but the only thing that I can come to is he, he associated each tampon I had with a different guy in my life. Either way, I walked into my new country school and I was so excited because I thought for now, I was going to have a new reputation until I saw the first kid. He pointed at me and said, isn't that the girl who got talked about at her old school and she couldn't take it anymore? You see, our schools were only 16 miles apart, word traveled fast, and the tampon stigma definitely followed me. Pretty soon, my parents got annoyed with driving back and forth, and I had to go back to my old Catholic school. I walked in thinking that the rumors would go away, but no, this was home of Katie and her tampon escapades. The rumors didn't go anywhere. I finished out my eighth grade year, and then I decided to transfer to the public school system. I thought for sure I would be able to find at least one social group out of 2,000 kids. There has to be somewhere where I can fit in and belong, even if the stigma followed me. Then two weeks before my first day, the most shocking chapter of my life happened. By now, both of my parents had been remarried, and my stepbrother was moving into my home. His father came into our house, and our parents got into a physical altercation. My father, in self-defense, shot him, and he later died at the hospital. News television outlets and newspapers surrounded our house. It was everywhere, and there was absolutely nowhere to hide. This is when I lost all hope of ever making it in any school. But I walked into that public school system the first day, and the first kid that I saw said, isn't that the girl whose dad just killed somebody? There was no way I was going to make it in this school either. So what I did is I started to run. I just ran and ran and ran. I ran away from all the rejection, and I focused all my anger and the frustration in my life towards running and relieving the stress. At that moment, I had nowhere else to go when I was focusing all that frustration. The running, I eventually ran all the way to the Drake Relays and to the Iowa State track meet. There are two moments in life where you are willing to do anything. One of those moments is when you have all the confidence in the world. This was not me. The second moment is when you are so low and you have nowhere else to go. And then the reverse effect happens once you once again can do anything. This was me. I decided to try out for cheerleading. I eventually made it, and I worked my way to a captain position. With all the confidence that I built through track and cheerleading, I decided to join various clubs and activities in my school. I was starting to make friends, and for the first time in my life, I was excited to go to school. I dedicated myself to my academics and worked my way to straight A's and eventually made National Honor Society. All the cloudiness and the murkiness in my life was starting to disappear, and I was finally finding myself. Just when I thought I was above the clouds and finally raising into that eventual sunlight, 
I incurred another obstacle. This was far more devastating than anything that I had been up against before in the past. And this was the day my mother told me that she had incurable lung cancer. I kept going to my activities, to school, keeping up my grades, but my life took on a completely different quality. Any time that I wasn't doing any of my activities, I was spending time with my mother. In just five short months after she was diagnosed, she passed away, and I was only 18 years old. I decided to enroll into a community college in my hometown to make sure that I was staying close to my support system and my family. But what I did do is I continued my activities, I kept up my academics, and I just recently graduated with a degree in marketing and management from Northwest Missouri State University. <laughs> and in February, I was crowned Miss Greater Des Moines. <laughs> so you see, you can't judge a book by its cover. From the outside of my life, it looks spectacular. People would think, how lucky is she? But until you know my inside chapters, you don't really know me. I want to be an example to you of how wrong it is to judge a book by its cover. But more importantly, I have a second message to share. Before third grade, my life was happiness and childhood memories. It was very fragile. But throughout the rest of the chapters of my life, they have been filled with divorce, judgment, fear, achievement, dreams, ambitions, and goals. And it's all of these things, both good and bad, that make us not what we are, but who we become, and together make us unbreakable. <laughs>